I'm Laura Len. We're standing in front of a house in Plains, Georgia that President Carter lived in at one point. I had a wonderful opportunity having dinner with him and he shared with me some stories that happened. And in this home, there was a ghost dog, a white ghost dog. I believe he said it looked like a German shepherd and I was imagining a spirit wolf, but he assured me it wasn't a wolf. And he did report this happened a couple times. The house also has been reported to be haunted by the community over and over by a woman that walks through here and a man, children's spirits throughout the home. We did an investigation in the dark a couple days ago, so we're coming back here today to do the investigation during the day. During the time that we're in there, I'm going to explain to you some of the ways that I like to investigate homes that are reported to be haunted. So we're going to go on in. So before I even hit a front door of a house that's reported to be haunted, I always ask Archangel Michael to protect me with his ray of light. And before I even do that, I'm going to be looking at the house from the street level, looking into the house, seeing what I can feel, what impressions I'm receiving, what I feel like through my body. If there's any spirits that's trying to communicate with me outside, I, I'm absolutely sure that the house is already has that imprintation. And of course, it's very interesting going inside to the residence to finding out more. But when you're tapping in, and if you're new at this, this is a wonderful way to start. Start outside of the street. Just look inside the home and look at inside the windows. See if you can feel like there's any spirits looking at you, any children. Do you have any imprint? impression that there might be adults inside the home, maybe getting the stories or imagining what may have took place in the home. And when you're filtering through, if you're feeling it on the right side of your mind, it seems to be more about spirit activity. At least in my case, this is how I pick it up. So that might be a good hint for you. So it looks like the cameraman is already having issues with the battery. It's perfectly, uh, full battery was drained within moments. We only did about three minutes of shots so far and I know he checked his batteries and rechecked and we're also having problems with the camera regarding recording. So this can be interesting to say the least. Um, one of the things that I enjoy when I'm working or looking through a house and tapping into it is just going, starting from the top and working my way down to the bottom and the reason is is because I have a theory that spirits only have so long to be able to show themselves acclimate to our energy to be able to tap into our source and I like to go where the spirits most likely are and in my experience spirits tend to hide and oftentimes they're going to be hiding in the attic so if there is access I do like to go up into the attic so that's where we're going to start I'm going to use my pendulum. I'm just going to ask the spirit to show me where they're at or the energy where, where there might be energy in the home if they're hiding. So you're obviously going to be looking at the floor to make sure you're not standing on anything spongy or you've got to be careful with these older homes. And be prepared, obviously, with uh, flashlights if you're doing this during the nighttime. But what you're really looking into or tapping into is the energy in the room. So I always just like to close my eyes for a moment and breathe and just see what I feel. And, you know, there is very obvious spirit in this house. Uh, it's undeniable. I feel eyes watching me right now. And it seems to be for some reason, a place where kids enjoy being. There is a story in here that's pretty sad and a story that's probably a, a very much, a lot happier actually here too. This was part of the Underground Railroad at one time. There was a place underneath the attic here where the slaves were harbored safe for their journey. And so there is, uh, a, a, a really uh, interesting part of this house that held that uh, safe harbor. But it also, on the opposite spectrum, 
was a home that harbored a mentally ill woman. There's some stories about a woman that was trapped into the part of this attic and basically lived her life in a what appears to be about an eight by six enclosure. I cannot access this little room, but um, you can kind of see inside of it and it is pretty frightening when you think about living your life out in this little space. And whether her spirit here is here or not, I, I am unaware. I can't feel her presence, but sometimes spirits, when they lived a life like that, they do tend to stay in the same space in torment. And of course, if this is something that you find yourself upon when entering a haunted house, you know, praying for them, talking with them in your mind, help trying to help them find a better way is always helpful. This reason I uh, like to share this experience or what I learned is because I feel like it's important for us to understand that these spirits are here. Not only are they stuck or feel sadness or fears, perhaps, sometimes they feel very lost and what they're really searching for when they are tapping into us is some help. So we can be that, that arm to help them and to find their light, to find their peace. So if you have a chance or an opportunity and you do tap into a spirit, ask, ask the spirit questions, see what comes through in your mind. Again, if you feel it in the right side of your mind, it is probably spirit energy. At least that's how I experience it. And, you know, ask if you can help them, you know, counsel them, perhaps be their friend, share with them that you've had, you know, some hard experiences too. And, you know, it's, it's okay, you know, to rehash it, but it's better to let it go and, and release the toxicity. So I know that that sounds maybe odd, but in reality, I have seen over the years, some amazing, uh, spirit activity happen and some even more incredible spirit releases where they found that inner light. So it does, it, it is something interesting for you to try and to, to, and if you do experience it, it is an amazing feeling of release and a uh, lightness and, and a total joy. Okay. So with one tool that I do use readily during investigations is a pendulum and I'm standing over the area that it was reported where the mentally ill lady lived her life or child lived her life. And uh, I'm just going to ask a question. I'm going to ask the pendulum if indeed a child or lady did live underneath this attic floor. It's already saying yes. Is clear. Is this one space where she lived? And it's saying yes, very quickly, actually. Clear. Is there any residue of her spirit left here in this home at this point? And they're saying yes. Clear. So obviously I'm going to be doing some praying and try to tap into her spirit, her energy to see if I can help her. But it is showing that this, that she did indeed stay here. Right now I'm standing in the space that was reported to be a doctor's office at one time. One impression that I do have very strongly about this home, it one time was a makeshift hospital. It could have been one of a flu or some type of plague or some type of, uh, I don't know, consumption, a lot of uh, illness at one time. Many people died in this home. I know that for a fact. I can feel the presence of that, maybe residually I'm feeling it. But I do have that impression strong. And this room feels to me like a, a very strong hot spot for sure. Another good thing to do when you're looking at a haunted residence is looking at the property, going out and seeing if there's any structures on the pop on the property that might be 
interesting, you know, what's the stories regarding the structures. Obviously, this is a very old building, and it does give a little bit more feeling of it being, you know, during the, the Civil War era. era and But being careful, too, because obviously there may be snakes, you know, in, at some places, so you want to make sure that you're, if there is brushes or grasses, you know, make sure you're careful. But on the other hand, doing as thorough an investigation as possible does seem to help bring good results in finding out the information you're looking for. So after investigating this home, I do feel that it is very haunted. I am convinced that there is a lot of imprinted energy here, residual energy. It's an amazing property, to say the least. I want to remind you some things to help keep yourself safe. At least this is what I do and it seems to work pretty well is asking your protector, whatever your shield is, always having that on during an investigation. In my, my case, it's asking Archangel Michael to shield and protect me. Uh, always having a phone with you is important just in case of an emergency. Having a friend with you, please never do this alone. It is not safe. You never know what can happen. You're in a very vulnerable space or time when you're doing an a, a investigation. So, uh, you know, always have a friend with you, even in the within the room. I believe it's pretty important. And above all, enjoy yourself and acknowledge the presence if you do feel it in a in a sensitive, um, sincere way. Asking them for if they could use any help. It's pretty amazing what happens, and it seems to deepen the connection that we feel not only here, but spiritually, and, and it just it get, it gets a universal flow that is really impressive once you start tapping into these, these uh, energies, people, readily. So thank you very much for joining me, and again, my name is Laura Lynn.